Let us pray. Our blessed Father, I'm just grateful to you for the way you've kept us throughout this year. We've now come to the last day of this year. And it seems like yesterday when the new year started. And all through the year, yes, we've gone through various situations and circumstances. But your hand upon us has been good. You have kept us alive. You've fought battles for us. You've delivered us from the plans of the enemy. You've provided for us. You've healed us. And you've made ways for us. I just bless, I worship, and magnify your name. I ask God that in this moment, you will help us to adopt that attitude of praising and worshiping you, being thankful for all the goodness and the mercies and the blessings that you've been showering upon us in Jesus' name. And Lord, in the few minutes that we have now, I pray you will help us through the Holy Spirit to really reflect, to look inward, and to find reasons why we should be thankful unto God, to thank God and to say so. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. In Jesus' glorious name we pray. Amen. I think it was this morning or yesterday in the evening that a thought came to my mind. And that thought is based on a statement that I used many years ago. Uh, that was more than 30 years ago when I was finishing uh, the writing up of my PhD thesis. <clears throat> I was thinking of a phrase that I could just put, you know, when people write books, sometimes they find a statement, uh, what they sometimes can be called quotable quotes, a statement that is pungent that you can put in the uh, front uh, page, uh, the inside front page of the book, like a kind of theme, something that is quotable that people uh, can reflect on. And what I put down there uh, in that thesis was uh, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Well, even though I used it more than 30 years ago, I wasn't the one that invented that statement. I saw it somewhere, I read it, I don't remember now uh, where I saw it or where I read it. But around that time when I was thinking, what statement, what quotation can I just place then? that could give a message to people. I started thinking about the process that had gone through even before the start of the study until throughout the study to the end and to think that what seemed so far off before the start was completed made me to adopt that statement and I put it there. The journey of a thousand miles <clears throat> begins with one step. And today, I feel the same as I look back over this year. We started from 1st January, 12 months ago. And today, we've come to the last day of the month, 31st of December. It's just looking back, it appears as if it was a journey of a thousand miles. But how did we go about it? We just started it with one step. And here we are, we've already reached the end. And that is a reminder to us that when we are facing any task that looks big, it looks unsurmountable, it seems as if the end is far out of sight, let us remember that the journey of a thousand miles always begins with one step. Once you take that one step and take the next step, the next step and keep going and don't give up, you will get to the end of a thousand miles. But if you are just sitting down and thinking of the journey, hey, a thousand miles is so far away, and you start comparing uh, maybe from one landmark to one landmark, uh, uh, you could become so discouraged that you don't even have the energy or the courage to start. Don't think about how it is going to be accomplished. Just step out and keep starting, keep going. By the time you come to the end and look back, you will be able to uh, thank the Lord 
for how he has seen you through in that journey. In the message today, I know we, because of all the things we've done uh, already in today's service, our time is uh, limited. In the few minutes that is remaining, I want to talk to us about being thankful, thanking God, and actually saying so, developing that attitude of gratitude. Uh, just like the song that we just rendered, talked about, I'll come back to that song. We need to reflect on our life and really thank God. You see, we live at a time in a world where a lot of things are happening, confusion, commotion, all sorts of things. In a world where people like to complain about anything and everything. Talk to somebody. I was uh, yesterday, they may begin by saying, not too bad. In other words, there, are, there were some bad things there. And sometimes people uh, turn to focus on the bad thing, what didn't happen, what they were expecting that didn't materialize. And that can color one's life and it can make one not to actually look at the good things that have been happening and begin to thank God for it. I was listening to a message uh, and I think a few pastors, a few ministers of the gospel has, have used that illustration. And so sometimes it varies depending on who he use it. This minister had a, a member of the congregation come to him. That member of the congregation said, Pastor, things are just so bad. There is nothing up, up, up good in my life at all. I don't know what to do. Uh, you are talking about people thanking God and blessing God for the good things God has done for them. I can't see any good thing in my life. I can't see anything that uh, I should thank God for. And the pastor says, think. I'm sure you will be able to find something. He says, there is absolutely nothing. I can't think of any good thing. Everything has been bad. Everything has been difficult. And the pastor says, okay, come. Let us do an exercise. Sit down. The pastor picked up a piece of paper, gave to him. I said, on one side of this piece of paper, I want you to write, all the bad things that has happened. On the other side, I want you to write all the good things that has happened that you could thank God for. And, uh, and the man says, well, that will be easy. The side that uh, is full of bad things, there will be so many things I can put down. But the side for good things, <laughs> I, I, I don't think there will be anything at all to put down. So he went on writing down list of the bad things, things to complain about, things to uh, uh, be unhappy about on one side. And the other side was blank. And the pastor said, okay, now turn it to the other side. Let's put down the things that are good in your life. And the man said, I can't think of any. I don't know of any. And the pastor says, okay. Um, oh, I am really sorry. I heard that your house has been burned down by fire. And the man said, what? My house? No. I have a beautiful house. The house is still there. The house has not been burned down by fire. And the, 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 the pastor says, okay, right down there, I have a beautiful house. <laughs> the house is not burned down by fire. I still have a house. I still have a home. Do you know there are many people that are homeless? They don't have a place to go to. And the pastor said, okay, oh, I'm sorry to hear that your wife passed away. You have, you have lost your wife. Your wife has died. And the man said, where are you getting this news from? I have a beautiful wife. My wife is dead. He's not dead. And the pastor said, okay, write down there. I have a beautiful wife. My wife is alive. Uh, he's, he's not dead. And then the pastor came up with something else. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that you lost your job. What a sad story. And the man said, what are you talking about? I've not lost my job. I have a good job. I'm still uh, uh, doing the job every day. And the pastor said, right down there, number three, I have a good job. And the man got the gist. And so with that understanding, he went on to write and fill the page with so many good things that has been happening in his life. See, that is how sometimes we are. 
we tend to focus on the difficult things, the negative things, the bad things that has happened, the unpleasant circumstances that sometimes we forget to look, take the bigger picture, look at everything and begin to find out the good things that God has been doing for us and to thank God for it. In Psalms chapter 100, verse 5, the Bible tells us, it says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. And really, today at the beginning of this worship, uh, of this service, we've had a good time of worship. And I saw the comments that we put on the chat. Uh, what wonderful song. Who are the authors of this song and uh, 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 etc. I don't even know the authors of some of those songs. But we made joyful noise to the Lord. Uh, 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 and we thank God for that. Verse 2 says, Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. We've been singing. Know ye that the Lord he is God. It is he that has made us and not our we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his case with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Be thankful unto God. Bless his name. When you come to the presence of God, whether in prayer, you kneel down, start with thanksgiving. Start with worshiping God. When Jesus taught the disciples how to pray, uh, you find the story in Matthew chapter 6. He gave them that model prayer. And the prayer started with our Father who art in heaven. That is worship. You start with worshiping God. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his court with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Verse 5, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. You see, we live in a world where there is so much deception, so much lies, and people use social media to uh, uh, misinform people, to misinterpret situations, to propagate lies, and so on. But our God is not like that. The truth of God endures to all generations. And we need to thank God that at least there is a reliable source that we can get through even in a time in a world where there are so many misinformation, deception, lies, manipulations, etc. In the song we just sang before we started the service, that song was written by a man called uh, Johnson Oatsman. And he made this statement, he says, when upon life billows you are tempestuous, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. If you form that habit of once in a while sitting down, reflecting on, the, on your life from the time you were born till this day, there will be many situations, many circumstances you will find that God did something for you, opened doors for you, delivered you, healed you, provided for you that you can thank God for. And the, the thing is that when you begin to see that and you begin to thank God, God becomes happy and God begins to open more doors for you and pour out more blessings in, on, on, onto you from day to day. Now, uh, within the limited time I have, I just want to uh, follow the guidance in that song. Count your blessings, name them one by one. And I'm going to do that by using one chapter of the Bible to see somebody in the Bible that recounted on the blessings of God. And as we go through this, some of those may resonate with things that you, you've come across by yourself. I mean, when we had testimonies in the earlier part of the service, there were a number of testimonies on what God has done, how people are happy, the, uh, how God has kept them, protected them, healed them, delivered them from accidents, etc. 
So I'm going to look at Psalm 107 from verses 1 to 43. I'm not going to read all the verses, but I'm just going to pick up from some of those verses the things that you can thank God for. And as we finish the service, actually I, I was thinking once we finish, we will have another time of worship. But because our time is limited, I don't think we will be able to do that. But I will just go through this. And then uh, at the end, once we finish, and maybe you get back home, you need to really sit down and count your blessings and begin to thank God. Your perspective will change and it will open doors for more blessings of God to come your way. So Psalm 107 from verse 1. Verse 1 says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, and he give the reason. The first reason he give there is, for he is good. You have a good God. A God that doesn't change. A God that is reliable. A God that loves you. A God that is interested in your well-being. A God that protects your back. So we, we need to thank God because God is good. The second thing is still in verse 1. He says, for his mercies endure it forever. That is another reason to thank God. The mercies of God is not only for a temporary time. No, it endures forever. You can rely on that mercy. Anytime you need the mercy of God, God will be there to show that mercy to you. In verse 2, it says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he had redeemed from the hand of the enemy. God redeemed us, brought us back. He didn't allow the enemy, the devil, to keep us, to have his way, to do whatever he liked. You don't know what the devil was planning, maybe in the night. What dangers is taking place in the spiritual realm? But God buys us back. God redeems us from the hand of the enemy. When you look at verses 3 to 5, I'm not going to read. You see the psalmist recounting the journeys of life. You need to recount the journey you've taken. The journeys of life that you've gone through. And then in the next verse, verse 6, he says, Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. That means when they got into trouble, they cried unto God. And what did God do? Did God abandon them? No. He says in that verse 6, and he delivered them out of their distresses. God has done that for me. And I can thank God for deliverance. You too can thank God. There are many situations that you encounter trouble and you cried out to God and God stepped in for you. That's why you are still here. In verse 7, he says, and he led them forth by the right way. Oh, this is wonderful. And when I reflect on my life, uh, the way God led me, decisions about career, the first job, the, uh, where to go to, where, uh, where to live, and so on. I just thank God because God led me in the right way, the right way, and to my right destination. You look at verses 8, verses 15, verses 21, verses 31, you see the same thing repeated there over and over. Oh, that men would Praise the Lord for his goodness. Oh, that people would great praise God because of his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. We need to praise God because of his wonderful works to the children of men, to us. In verse 9, he said he satisfied the longing soul. Yes, there were times you long for something, you desire for something, whether the thing was food, finance, job, money, etc. God satisfied the longing soul. I've shared testimony here uh, more than 30 years ago when I was looking for my first job here, how it was very difficult to get a job. That was a longing of my soul. But God opened the door, gave me the job, and till today I'm still working. God satisfied my longing, longing soul. And feel it the hungry soul with goodness. God fills the, long, uh, the, 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 the hungry soul. The, the psalmist said, I have been young and now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. 
God will always do that. Another passage, God says, I am the one that makes you and I will pay you even until four is. In fact, until you grow so old and all your hair turns white, I says I will take care of you. I will provide for you. And yes, I was taking, uh, talking to, I can't remember whether it's uh, to, my, uh, to my children or just one of them. I was telling them that God has been taking care of me and providing for me from when I had nothing to now when I am at the age I am now. And that, that God has been very good and he will continue to provide for every one of us until the very end of our life. In verse 13, he says, Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. Similar to what he said in verse 6, crying in the time of trouble, and God bringing deliverance, speedy deliverance. Verse 14, he brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death. Your path may have been filled with darkness in the past. You may have walked through the valley of the shadow of death, but God has brought you through. You didn't die. You are no longer walking in darkness. And the last part of that verse 14 says, and break their bands in sunder. Demons may have put bands, causes, whatever they may be, spells, Things to ruin you, to destroy you, to keep you in bondage. But the Bible says God broke those bands, broke them asunder, and set you free. I, I love that passage in John chapter 8, verse 32 and 36. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Whosoever Jesus sets free, he is free indeed. I often quote that uh, a passage and say, God, thank you. For the power in your word, because I know the truth, because I follow you, because yes, I, be, I follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus has set me free. I cannot be bound by Satan. I cannot be bound by witches. Cannot be bound by demons. I cannot be bound by anything of the enemy. In verse 16, he says, For he had broken the gates of brass. Those were like prison gates that the devil tried to lock you down, lock you in to prevent you making progress or getting freedom but God broke those gates and it says in the latter part and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Bars of iron are supposed to be strong to prevent a person from escaping but God cut it asunder like he did for Peter. Peter was put in the prison to be killed but the believers prayed and in the middle of the night the angel of the Lord came and took him out of the prison. The Bible says when they got to the iron gate, the iron gate just opened on its own accord. The same God is our God, is doing the same for us in Jesus' name. In verse 20, he says, he sent his word and healed them. I have been healed many times, even this year, through the word of God. So this is a reason to thank God and bless God. And it says, uh, still in that latter part of verse 20, and deliver them from their destruction. Satan may have set traps. Satan may have planned to bring maybe accidents or problems. Our sister testified this morning how God delivered her from two accidents this month. Yes, that was a, a destruction the enemy wanted to bring to your life and God delivered you. That is the reason to thank God, to bless God. And in verse 22, he says, let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving. That's what we should do. And declare his works with rejoicing. Learn to rejoice. Yes, it's not the end of the world. Whatever little thing you are going through, don't allow it to block out the joy of God and the happiness. You see, in my systematic study of the Bible, I start from Genesis, read through till I get to the end of the Bible in Revelation, then I start again. And the last time I was reading through it, when I came to the life of David, oh, I was astounded. New revelations came to me that David did not just praise God when he was not in trouble. In fact, many of the praises, many of the uh, uh, songs, many of the rejoicing took place in the very depth of the trouble. 
in the very depth of the problem, he would burst out and praise God and say, God, I will yet praise you. I will yet do this. And God delivered him from his trouble. And you know, Paul, when he was writing to the believers, he says, rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say, rejoice. And Bible scholars tell us that Paul wrote that epistle when he was chained in the prison. Right there in the prison, he's telling people, rejoice in the Lord. So you can exercise joy. Joy is not a, 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 something that is affected by circumstances. Happiness is affected by circumstances. But joy comes from the Lord. It, it comes from your remembering how good he, God is, what he's doing for you. And when you remember like that, and when you sing and praise the Lord, you, God becomes glorified uh, uh, through it. In verses 23 to 24, it talks about people that travel in the sea uh, uh, with ship. People that do business in deep waters. He says, they see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. God does wonderful things all over. And when you look at the sky, the plants, the field, everywhere, you can see the wonderful things God has done. Just thank God for the green grass. Thank God for the uh, uh, wind. Thank God for the weather. Thank God for the cold. Thank God for the, drain, uh, for, for, for the rain. Thank God for the sunshine. Don't just be a complainer that when it is sunny, you complain the sun is too hot. When it's raining, you complain that it's such a poor weather, such a bad weather. Uh, 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 uh. No, learn to thank God for everything because everything has its purpose and everything has its work. In verse 28, he, he repeated what he said uh, earlier on, how they cried to God in their trouble and God brought them out of their distresses. In verse 29, he, uh, that was referring to the people in the sea that we just talked about. And it's in verse 29, he says, he make it the storm a calm. This means that they cried out to God in the trouble when they were in the stormy sea. And God made the storm a calm, and the waves then all of become a still. Now, yesterday, I went shopping. <clears throat> and as I came out of one shop, there was a lady standing out distributing gospel leaflet. She gave one to me. I collected it and I thanked her and told her, God bless you. When I came back home, I said, let me read this gospel leaflet. The gospel leaflet was titled Amazing Grace. I don't have it here. I could have read to you. And it was talking about the sharing in that leaflet the story of how John Newton became a Christian. John Newton lived and died many, many years ago. He was the person that uh, led uh, the, this thing, uh, the movement for the abolition of slave trade. But the, this person lived a rough, difficult life. The mother died when he was seven years old. And when he was 11 years old, the father sent him to go and start work. Uh, he sent him to join a ship as a servant in the ship, help whatever the ship master want to, uh, uh, wanted to do. And John became uh, uh, very naughty. Bad behavior, this and that, so many things. It was like uncontrollable because he was so unhappy about life. Why did this happen? Why did my mother die at the age of seven? Why does my father uh, 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 treat me like this, send me out as a young boy, 11 years old, to work? And so many things were going on like that. And he became so bitter and so stubborn, so rebellious, bad attitude. And it continued like that, continued like that, until one day he got a, a job. And then because of the bad attitude, he was fired from the job. Life became difficult. And one day he was in a, in, in a ship in a voyage when there was a severe storm. And you know, ship in those days were not like modern ship today. We are talking about things over 100 years ago. And the ship was under severe storm that all hope was lost. And it was at that time that it just occurred to me, look, if I die now, where will I go? He started thinking, 
he wanted to pray. He didn't know how to pray. And uh, it was then he just remembered a few words that maybe it's his head, either in Sunday school or whatever. He uttered them to God. And all of a sudden, the storm ceased. Everything became calm. And he later on surrendered his life to Christ. And he became a pastor. And from there, he became a politician. And in fact, he used to be a shipmaster that, uh, that we used to bring slaves from Africa to uh, the West. But now he, he became a politician fighting for the abolition of slavery. It was after that salvation that he took a pain and wrote that song, Amazing Grace. How God could save a wretch like him. So that verse 29 is reminding us how God calms storms. Your own storm may not be the type that is out there in the sea. Whatever the storm, when you cry to God, God calms them. And you can sing, uh, sing to God and praise God for that. The wave they, they, thereof are still, verse 30. Then are they glad because, because they be quiet. So bring it them unto their desired heaven, their destination. God will take you to the destination you are going. In verse 33 to 34, he talks about how God turns rivers into wilderness and water springs into dry ground for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. In other words, God punishes and judges the wicked people. We need to thank God that God doesn't just leave the wicked people to carry on like that. When Herod was persecuting the early church, he killed James, he picked up Peter, and God delivered Peter. He wanted to do more evil towards the God. The Bible says God just struck him dead. And worms ate him while he was making a speech. The same thing uh, too. Uh, uh, God, uh, God is watching over the situation. If he sees wicked people wanting to ruin your life, God can take a step to eliminate them. Verses 35 to 37, it's not all the time that God eliminates. Sometimes God actually saves those people like Saul of Tarsus who was persecuting the early church. God saved him and he became a preacher of the gospel. Verse 34, sorry, 35 to 37 talks about how God turns the wilderness into a standing water and dry ground into water springs. There he make the hungry to dwell that they may prepare a city for habitation, so they feel, plant vineyard, uh, which may yield fruit of increase. That is blessing in hard places, in difficult places. God does that, and it's a reason to thank the Lord. Verse 38, he blessed them also, that, uh, so that they are multiplied greatly, and suffered not their cattle to, this, uh, to decrease. He did that for Israel, he's doing it for us. He will continue to do uh, the same to us. In verse 41, yet set the poor on high from affliction and making him families like a flock. That is what God does and worthy of thanking God and praising God. Verse 42, the righteous shall see it and rejoice. Yes, you will see the goodness of the Lord. You will rejoice. Verse 43, whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. Loving kindness of the Lord. You get to understand, you get to see when you ponder, when you bless the name of the Lord. We are going to uh, uh, round up right now. There are many blessings in praising and worshiping God. In Psalm 22, verse 3, the Bible tells us that God inhabits the praises of his children. And when God comes to inhabit where you are praising him, miracles take place. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 22, we saw one such miracle. When the children of Israel began to sing and to praise, God set ambushment against the enemies and destroyed all of them. In Acts chapter 16, verse 25 to 26, we saw another miracle that took place when Paul and Silas in prison at the midnight sang praises unto God. God sent an earthquake that set them free. So, brethren, in conclusion, I want to uh, uh, say that we need to learn not to allow the immediate circumstances or problems or difficulties to stop us from seeing the good things God is doing for us and praising God. Let's adopt the attitude of praise 
thanksgiving and God will be with us. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, the Bible tells us, let the peace of God rule in your heart. Uh, to which ye are also called in one body, and be ye thankful, be ye thankful. Thank God. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, it says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So let's learn to thank God. And remember that song we sang earlier on, count your blessings, name them one by one. You may need to do that exercise. Count your blessings, name them one by one, and then begin to thank God for what the Lord has done for you. Let's just bow our head now and just thank God in this prayer session. Thank God for your life. Thank God for what he has done for you. Thank God for where he has taken you from and where he has taken you to. Thank God for the deliverances. Thank God you are alive. Thank God you are breathing. Thank God you are still in faith. Thank God because God is good. God is great. God is marvelous. Just bless the name of God. Just worship him. Adore him. Magnify him. Glorify his name. I was telling the children during family devotion this week when there was this storm. I look at the news. I saw so many houses destroyed in, in this land because of the storm. And when I reflected and saw the storm had not had any negative effect on us apart from the wind that blew, I said we need to thank God for this. We shouldn't just take it for granted that many houses, shops, and so on are pulled down, trees blown down, uh, so many things destroyed, and yet nothing affects us negatively. It's not because we are better than those people. No, no. But just out of the goodness of God. So we need to see all those things as opportunity to thank God. Thank God for his goodness uh, and just bless the name of the Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. A blessed and everlasting Father, I just thank you once more. When I look at my life, when I look at the church, when I look at the things that you've done for us, oh God, I just want to thank you. I just want to bless you. I just want to adore you. I say, Father, thank you. Lord, help me never to allow any adverse situations or circumstances to close my mouth from thanking you, from blessing you, from worshiping you. Help me all the days of my life to live to thank you, to live to bless you, to live to worship you, and to adore you. Oh, Father, I adore you. I bless you. I magnify your name. Help me, oh God, to continually praise you. And as I praise you, may you inhabit the praises that I offer unto you. May the praises of my mouth be acceptable unto you in Jesus' name. Help every one of us to praise you, to sing praises to you, to believe you. And as we do that, continue to bless us more and more. In Jesus' glorious name, we pray. Amen.